Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Singapore International Dynamic Speakers. We are now in the second portion of our meeting this evening, the manual presentation portion of our meeting. And today we have two manual presentations for you. We have one from our very own Toastmaster Angela and one from your student. Toastmaster Angela's presentation would be from the persuasive influence part and it's the final project in this part. Therefore, she will be doing reflecting on her path. So, Master Angela is an avid blocker, a published author, and an English teacher, not to mention a highly accomplished those master. So, Master Angela's presentation today is persuasive influence, the hardest part. Why? So, Master Angela, persuasive influence, the hardest part. Why? Thank you very much, Edward, for that lovely introduction. I have done all the paths, so I feel I'm in a good position to help you to know how this path compares with all the others. Looking at all of them, the one that is the most popular is the presentation pathway. And this is the one most people start with, and it's most similar to the old manuals before they went online. It's simply about presentation, concentrating on presentations. Now, all the paths are the same in the first two levels, or at least almost the same. My second path was engaging humor and the difference was that at the second level which is all about knowing your style which mostly they ask you to identify your leadership style and your communication style and often the third one is going to be possibly an option but more usually it's listening and what you do for that is you can go and be a Toastmaster of the day. However, on um, engaging humour, it's know your humorous style. And that's the difference in that path. Now, on all the paths, I found that I had trouble telling the difference between communication style and leadership style because I thought well at the one extreme you're dictatorial and you're saying do this and surely it's the same whether you're the dictator or you're speaking dictatorially and at the opposite end is the democratic person who says I want to know everybody's opinion and now do what you like anyway so I couldn't see the difference. However, having done the same thing so many times, I can now see how you can do it and make a difference. And one of the ways of doing that particular project I have learned is to pick people who have a certain style. Now in Singapore, the dictatorial person would have been Lee Kuan Yew, who told everybody what to do. And he was a bit like the American Ford, who said, if I'd asked people what they want to do, what they want, they'd have said they want a faster horse. And, but he didn't listen to what they wanted. He went on and he designed the motor car. So that was Lee Kuan Yew's attitude, which was you don't ask people what they want. You, you're the leader, you decide what they want and you tell them what they want. So that is the, the one thing I learned, through, not from a particular path, but I would say perhaps finally in this path, having done all 13 paths each time I did that particular project, I learned a bit more about it and got clearer on it. 
Now, in persuasive influence, why is it the hardest path? Because if you go further into it to level three, this is where you start to get the mandatory or obligatory projects. Number seven is the first one in increasing knowledge. And again, the first one in building skills. And again, the first one in demonstrating expertise. And these are the most challenging ones. Now, let me go on to my next slide. Let me go back a moment to level one, because you may be thinking at this point, if Angela has done all those different paths, why on earth was she doing the first two paths again? And a lot of people object to doing the same paths again and again. But I can see the point of it. I've just explained to you how it took me several goes at it to try and do the leadership style and the communication style and listen to other people and do the evaluation and then see how they had done it as it gradually, gradually, gradually fell into place. Now you may remember learning the 12 times table at school. Your beloved teacher, 12 ones are 12, 12 twos are 24, and everybody repeated it. My husband tells me something and he expects me to understand it the first time. And he gets really annoyed and says, I've told you this before. Why are you asking me again? Why do I have to tell you again? For me, most things are like the 12 times table. I have to hear them again and again and again until eventually it's in, embedded in my brain. And this is what I have found with the pathways. Now you might say the introductory speech, the very first one, surely you'll be bored telling your life history again. And won't everybody be bored hearing it again? Well, it shouldn't be the same it, because your life has got so many different bits to it. For example, the first time I gave the speech about myself, I talked about my travels, myself as a travel writer. And I wore all different hats. And I talked about myself being from the UK, and myself ending up in Singapore, and myself going to America. And that was about travel. Then later on, I did another introductory speech. And this time I wanted to promote myself, not as a travel writer, but as an author. And I produced my best-selling books, which I had written and which were published by mainstream publishers, which made a lot of money for them, but no money for me because I was paid a big sum. So I produced these books, Wedding Speeches and Toasts, and Wedding Etiquette, and How to Be the Best Man. Then the third time I came to do the introduction to myself, I thought, I don't want to introduce these books going back to the 1980s, the first and most successful books. I want to to show people the books that I'm now self-publishing, my dream books. And I want to talk about my poetry workshop and talk about poetry. So I did that. And then the next one, I wanted to talk about writing your life story. So I talked about writing a book on the life story of my beloved mother-in-law and then I did it again and I thought let's this time do the introductory speech thinking about the audience they want to know things they can use 
So I talked about what I had produced for myself as a president, quick quotations so that I could make myself a speech every time. And who said what when, which is another quotations book. So you can see that even if you're repeating the past, you could be doing them differently. Now, a lot of people hesitate to do their opening speech and the opening speech is only four minutes and I've helped other people do it. And one of the things you do in level two is the project on mentoring. And what I discovered is I could entertain people telling them the story of the mentor, who is the man, I can see you nodding, you've heard this one, mentor, mentor his name was Mentor, and when Ulysses went off and launched a thousand ships and went to meet Helen of Troy, he left behind his son and felt by Mentor. So this was my opening each time I did this project. However, I varied it by picking different mentors because you're meant to talk about being a protege. So one of my mentors was the man who taught me to use all the props. And I became the queen of props with all my props. So I could produce my props and show my puppets. And that was a fun speech. Now, you get to understand that this is a very useful project because you're constantly meeting people and introducing yourself. And now that we're on Zoom, we do it before every meeting. So I've told you how icebreakers can be different, but how do you make sure you don't give the same identical speech? To the same audience again and again. Well, there are two ways of doing it. One is to do a different speech every time. And long ago, I was told how to do this. You get yourself a card index box and you write down who you spoke to on what occasion and what your three stories were. So if you go back to the same group again, you do a different three stories, maybe to illustrate the same point, but three different stories. And you know exactly what you said to them last time. So that's the card index system. However, if you listen to the people who won contests, and who went and won the international contest in America, the finals, the world champion of public speaking, they did the same speech again and again. And I have heard some of the people who got through to that final level, and I've heard the first time they gave the speech, and I thought, oh God, this is an awful speech. Are they really gonna do that? And then I've heard it six months later and I thought, that's quite a good speech actually. And then I've heard it just before they went off to America to give it. And I said, wow, that's a fantastic speech. Because the speech, every time they gave it, they'd improved it and improved it and improved it. So a year later, it's not the same speech. It's completely transformed. So you can give the same speech again and again, even to the same audience, and they can view it differently and they can be impressed and say, wow, I've heard that speech before, but it was so much better this time. Now, the other thing that is done is the active listening. You have to be table topics master and listen out 
and listen to what people are saying and comment on it. That's an easy one. What's next in this pathway? Options. One of the pieces of feedback I got on this level, by the time you're, you're on a repeating project or repeating pathway, people are getting a little tougher on you. And I was told, don't look down at your notes. Remember what you're going to say. Have a key word. So that was very useful, I thought. Now let's go on to these difficult mandatory projects. One was leading in a difficult situation. So I talked about the workshop I did and all the things that went wrong. And I'd heard lots of speeches about what went wrong and I loved them because I always thought that when things went wrong for me, it was because I was a failure and that other people never had anything going wrong for them. And it was a revelation to hear that all these top speakers and successful people had also had things going wrong and had to make decisions at the last minute and had people dropping out and all sorts of things going wrong. So I thought that would go down well when I explained what had gone wrong. But my evaluator said to me, you've got to finish on a high note. What people want to know is not what went wrong. They want to know how to put it right. So that was the most useful thing I learned, that to transform your speech, even if you talk about all the things that went wrong, you've got to end up telling people how to put them right. Then the next one I did was blogging. And one of the things I was told was show a picture of your blog. I was too shy. I didn't send people my blog a day in advance. If you're going to do the blog, send your blog to everyone a week in advance, get their feedback. If they say, why don't you do X? Why didn't you do X? then improve on it, then you've got something to talk about and you've got something you're more proud to show them. So that is the most important lesson, send out the blog in advance. If necessary, do this project more than once to different clubs and get feedback. Now, the other thing I did was I joined something called Ulysses, when you can ask for a mentor somewhere else in the world. It's organized by Toastmasters International. You sign up and each month you can get an, a new mentor. And you might find you get three mentors who don't really teach you anything or can't meet you because of a different time zone. Then all of a sudden you'll strike gold and someone will tell you something really helpful about your blog or any other project. Then finally, when you get to level five, high performance leadership, you have to set up a committee of three to five people, meet six times and do something new, such as a newsletter or a workshop. Now this can take you three to six months. You don't want to wait until the last moment and think I can do this next week. You don't have time. You can't do that project in a week. You've got to start that HPL project at the beginning of the entire path in order to complete it right at the end and finish your path in the time that you want to complete it in. And my aim was to get through the paths as fast as I could and move on to another path. 
because you're learning all the time and it's to my mind it's like a speech it's better to do it mess it up that's what toastmasters is all about it's doing it doing it wrongly learning how to do it again better and doing it again and getting it better the second time so that's what i recommend you do pathways is challenging if necessary do it again so here is the picture i have of how i succeeded in the end with the workshop ending on a high note level five i've completed it could you believe i've now done all 13 paths and i think i'm now ready to be a professional speaker which is one of the speeches in the last top part. Am I a professional speaker? Yes, I was before I started Pathways, but I think Pathways has helped. Back to you, Postmaster of the Evening, Edmund. Excellent job. Well done, Toastmaster Angela. Really followed along your part of persuasive influence. You knew what were the easier levels and what were the more difficult levels to, for you to accomplish and the lessons you took away. Excellent, excellent job. Now we will go into the second manual presentation of this evening. It will be by yours truly. Toastmaster Angela, would you like to do the introductions? Yes, I'll just reach for the evaluation form. Write a compelling blog. Compelling, that's the hard part. Not just a blog, a compelling blog. The purpose of this project is the member to review or introduce the skills needed to write and maintain a blog. You're supposed to have done eight posts. You know that before yes. you do this, you're supposed to have done eight posts. It's not that difficult. Just do eight posts. posts. <laughs> Do the same one eight times, but slightly differently. Now, the purpose of this speech, and it's only three minutes. I've done this speech and done it for five minutes because I thought three minutes was done. So I've done it sometimes for three minutes as required, and sometimes for five to seven. The purpose of the speech is for the member to share some aspect of his or her experience maintaining a blog. Are you going to do it for the three minutes and get it over quickly? Three minutes. <laughs> three minutes. Okay. Looking forward to it. Lovely subject. Really keen on this. Over to you, Edward. Places to visit in Belize. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, fellow Toastmaster Angela. Belize, it's the place to visit. But where in Belize would you like to visit? First, let me tell you a little about Belize. Belize is the only English speaking country in the Caribbean. We are south of Mexico, east of Guatemala, north of Honduras, and west of the Caribbean Sea. We were formerly a British colony, which is why we are the only English speaking country in Central America. But apart from that, we have lush rainforests. We have beautiful beaches. We have the only living barrier reef. Uh, Australia might claim the largest. We claim the, li the largest living barrier reef. And we also have Maya ruins. You can be on the beach in the morning and in the afternoon, 
being on one of our many mountain Maya ruins, looking for the sun to set. What are things to do to Belize? Who should come to Belize? Are you a nature lover? Then Belize is for you. Do you love exploring natural wonders? Then Belize is for you. Are you simply looking for a destination location? Then again, yes, Belize is for you. Like I said, Belize has the largest living barrier reef. Our barrier reef stretches 176 miles from the northernmost tip of Belize to the southernmost region of Belize. Our barrier reef is home to the world famous blue hole. It's on our lighthouse reef atoll, and it is a tourist destination as well as a dive destination for tourists from around the world. This is another picture of the blue hole. And if you are a snorkeler or you simply love to swim, our barrier reef, as I said, is a living barrier reef. All the corals are alive and blooming. And it's the home to some of the most beautiful marine wildlife. Secondly, we come to the nature aspect of, of, of Belize, the crystal caves. What are the crystal caves? The caves is the crystal caves are a natural cave system throughout the Maya mountain region of Belize that has beautiful selectites of many different colors. When the light reflects through caverns, you can see a rainbow of colors both on the crystals and in the water beneath the crystals. It's famous for cave tubing. This is, you can sit on a tube and flow down the river throughout the crystal caves. Belize, because of the lush rainforest, also have zip lining, and many rope bridges for you to explore our jungles via. Zip lining is one of my favorite activity. You get to zip through the canopy of the rainforest and enjoy the scenery. Belize, as I said, also have Maya ruins. You don't have to go to Mexico or to Argentina to see Maya ruins. You can come to Belize. This is one of our famous Maya ruins in Belize. This is Altunha. It is the, it was a plaza that housed a temple and a royal home of the Mayans that lived in Belize. This is San Antonich, another Maya ruin here in Belize. This one is in the Cayo district and it is the highest Maya ruin in Belize. At 768 feet above sea level. But if you are simply looking to relax in the Caribbean breeze, Belize is home of some of the most beautiful beaches in, this, in the region. The beach we are looking at is in Placencia. That's southern part of Belize. But as you can see, the beach is pristine. Again, you can come to Belize simply for fun and relaxation. You can visit our barrier reef, our mountain ruins, and our beaches. Belize, the place to visit. We will break for a few minutes and then we'll come back with the evaluations. Uh, yeah.